Jake and McClellan. Cape Girardeau's dogs are about to get their own park, and restaurants along certain streets can now offer outdoor seating on sidewalks. Here to talk about this and more is Cape Girardeau City Manager Scott Meyer. Thank you so much for coming over to talk with us. It's always good to be here, Jacob. Well, let's talk a little bit about these uh, sidewalk cafes. Uh, which uh, which restaurants can use this? Is, is this you know specifically for certain parts of, of downtown? Well, it's uh, written primarily for uh, places where we have very wide sidewalks, uh, like Broadway, which uh, really we built Broadway with the promenade on the north side uh, to provide those extra width of sidewalks to help bring uh, about uh, a, a look and a feel of uh, of uh, business going on and and spilling out into the sidewalks, and so uh, that's the reason for the ordinance. Was this part of kind of the the, the, the grand scheme, I guess, for the, uh, for the for the Broadway Quarter projects? Was this was this part was this you know just part of that? Yeah, it, certainly. We hoped that uh, by providing the promenade, that uh, that places of business would then look at that as an advantage and and bring that to our city, and so. Certainly, uh, it, it was part of the grand scheme. Of course, you know it's still a, a, a decision of a business as to what they want to do and how they want to go about it. Let's talk a little bit about some uh, changes to how uh, businesses can can apply for their license. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something the city council has looked at because there were many different types of, uh, of business licenses and the. Uh, the fees range pretty widely. <laughs> what's, uh, how, what's, what's, what's the decision <coughs> that the council has made on this? Well, we, we really st uh, took a step back, uh, it's been several months ago now, probably o over half a year, and, and said, how can we make uh, doing business with the city easier uh, for businesses? And one of the things that came up as we talked to some of the businesses in the chamber was, well, you know, you're, the, uh, the licensing process itself is difficult and it's hard to know how much you're going to owe. And so uh, we really uh, sat down with a, a group of those businesses and said, what can we do to streamline that? And uh, really a few things came out. One of them was uh, to, to uh, make an online available. Well, to do that, we needed it to be simpler. And so what, what came of that was that we, we really have uh, three fees. One of them is a, uh, a flat $40 fee, and that applies to most of the business categories. Uh, then we do have what uh, is a gross receipts fee, and so their fee is based on the gross receipts of that business. And then the third one is really a temporary uh, business license, and that one's going to be a $25 fee. So really, uh, you boil all that down to those three things, uh, make that simpler, and then also offer it online. Um, we talked to them about other possibilities, about maybe um, multi-year license uh, and some of the other things that might make it easier. And, and they said, no, if you do these other things, those, those things aren't as important. So we concentrated on those and uh, look to make things uh, more streamlined and easier, uh, not only for the businesses, but also for, uh, for our, our uh, workers. And uh, that's what we're here to do. So th th there were fees that ranged from like five to about $300 originally, and now they're all yes. gonna be around 40. Right, right. It was, yeah, there, it depended on which categories you had. And we had some obsolete uh, uh, categories that uh, were kind of funny to read, but uh, <laughs> uh, you, you know, back when they were uh, implemented, that was uh, the businesses of the day. Well, now it's, it, it's very different. So uh, we've been able to uh, just uh, really focus on those, but you're right, it was, you know, some were five and some were up to over 300 and then every, about every $5 increment in between. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, about the new dog park that's coming to Cape Girardeau. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where's this at, and what are some of the uh, what are some of the, the special attractions here? Well, it's going to be in Qantas Park, the old Cherokee Park, if you will, and uh, and uh, so it's it's really a basic dog park. It'll be a fenced area, and then there'll be some amenities within, and and uh, some different uh, uh, areas within uh, the, the fenced area, and uh, have a, a place where. Uh, dogs can get uh, water, uh, kind of a drinking fountain for dogs, and uh, our, our actually our folks were able to build a lot of that, uh, a lot of those kind of equipment. Uh, and uh, once those are in, then we think it's going to be a great opportunity for for dog owners to uh, bring bring their dogs to run and play, and then also for dog owners to interact with each other. Was this something that folks were asking for um, that you, you've heard a lot of comments about over the, in, over, the, over the past few years? There has been a lot of interest uh, for a dog park for some time, but this was one of the things that came through. Uh, our council uh, decided to try one uh, uh, and, and see how that goes uh, with uh, casino funding. And so uh, really it allows us to bring it uh, to Cape. It's, it's not a real expensive uh, expenditure 
uh, put it out there, see how, how it works, and then see if there's a desire for more or if this will uh, fill that need. Well, the city's putting in a uh, uh, traffic signal right now at the, uh, on Broadway and, and, and Henderson. Mm -hmm. um, why, is the, why is that signal going in there? Is that a, a high traffic area? Well, it's, uh, if you've ever been on Henderson trying to pull out on, on Broadway, certain times of the day, it's, it's almost an impossible left-hand turn. Um, uh, there's also a lot of pedestrian traffic around there with the university. Uh, the university stepped up and, uh, and paid, uh, it was a cost share between us and them. And, and uh, so we, uh, we were able to do that. And I think it'll make everything much more safe uh, for both pedestrians and cars and uh, make uh, the uh, uh, traffic flow uh, even better. Also by having a signal there, it'll also provide gaps in some of the intermediate roads between that signal and the next signal, which will allow, uh, allow uh, cars to pull out uh, within that area as well. Is it, are there any concerns about the proximity to uh, the intersection at West End Boulevard? Um, or, or, or typically, is, is that a, a long enough distance, I guess, you know, to it, have between? Uh, it is. It's, it's, it's kind of at that minimum uh, part, but, uh, but when you have signals that close together, you can coordinate them and, and have them work in conjunction with each other. And therefore, uh, you you kind of uh, bring the traffic in, and then uh, and then it continues, and so uh, you you reduce the delay while still getting the safety ben benefit. Um, when what happens is when you get cars backing up in the peak, trying to make that left turn, then they start taking chances, and then that causes accidents and and delay as well. So um, we feel very good about it, and um, I believe it'll be a nice addition uh, for the city. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, leaf pickup. Um, mm -hmm. when, does the, when will the city start picking up leaves in town, and, and what, are the, what, are the, what are the general routes and ways that folks can know when, uh, when, when, when the leaf trucks will be in their neighborhood? Well, leaf pickup uh, last year was, uh, was a big change, and uh, a lot of people experienced that. And it was a big change for us. We, we went to an automated uh, leaf truck, which allowed us to have just one person uh, pick up the leaves, whereas used to it was multiple trucks, multiple trailers, and lots of people to do that same activity. So we're able to go to one truck. Uh, the first year was a, uh, a little bit of a challenge for us because we didn't know exactly how fast they could go and, and how much uh, they could pick up in a day. Uh, what we did was from the traffic that uh, from last year, we actually track the truck with GPS. We were able to look, go back and look and see how long each route took. And so that's allowed us to then set up this year's program where they can be very reliable. So um, the best, uh, we are picking up leaves right now. Uh, we are out uh, picking up leaves and if people uh, want to, have already got their leaves and want to let us know, they can call us and let us know that their leaves are, are there and we can probably approximate when we'll be there to pick them up. Um, but we will eventually get there even if you don't call. And then there's a, there's a period of time that starts, I believe, uh, uh, in November, uh, and, and that is a very regimented uh, uh, route, and you can follow that on the internet, and then also the advertisements that you've got in your bill, and that are in the paper, and on our website will show you where, the, where and when the leaf truck will be in your area. And of course that doesn't end it, because once we get through that area, then uh, I think starting in December, then we'll come back and, and have the leaf truck available to, to finish up the, 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 uh, the routes and go over a couple more times. So we're, we're excited about this service. It's saving money and we think it's providing better, better uh, service because before this, we went one time and if your leaves weren't down yet, you know, just kind of too bad. Now then we're uh, covering a much longer period of time. Uh, real quickly, because we're, uh, we're almost out of time. Okay. Um, let's talk a little about re recycling. Um, mm -hmm. Have, have we seen an increase in, in, in the number of people in Cape Girardeau that have been recycling ever since we've gone to that single, single stream uh, system? We, we, we have, and, and uh, it just continues to be wildly successful. Uh, we're up to, I think, somebody said 51%, uh, which is really good. And we've done some figuring, and we believe now that we have 80% uh, of households are participating in the recycling uh, portion of, uh, of, of taking care of their solid waste. And that's incredible. I mean, that's incredible when you look at it compared to other cities, and it's incredible when, uh, when you look at our citizens and how they're taking advantage of it. It saves us money, and it's good for the environment. Scott Myers, Cape Girardeau City Manager. Scott, thank you so much for coming out to talk. It's been a pleasure. It's always good. Ahead, Governor Jay Nixon at Trail of Tears State Park. That's coming up on Cape Chronicle.